Thank you, Doctor, for sharing your knowledge with us. I would now like to invite Mr. David Hurley, who is an open source advocate and travels most weeks of the year to speak around the world on topics of tech, PHP, open source software. He is also the founder of Motic, the free and open source marketing automation platform. He is also the community manager for Joomla, the second largest content management system in the world, and he volunteers as a member of the production leadership team, the framework maintainers, and other groups. Please welcome Mr. David Hurley on stage to present his lecture on scaling applications for global communities. Good morning. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. Uh, I would like to first say thank you to the organizers especially uh, for the opportunity uh, to share with you about something that I find to be pretty exciting, um, and I think you will as well. Um, so I know you probably aren't too terribly interested in who I am, uh, but I will give you a little bit of information about myself. Now, I'm deeply involved in open source. Uh, I spend an incredible amount of my time writing open source code, uh, being involved in an open source community, several different ones. Um, and I truly love speaking about open source. It's one of my favorite topics. I speak, like she mentioned a second ago, around the world at events just like this on the topics of open source. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about what I work on. I'm really excited and I'm proud to share that um, I am the founder of an open source community myself uh, for marketing automation, and it's called Modic. Um, if you don't know anything about market automation, definitely come by and see me after my talk and I'll tell you more about it. It's extremely interesting and it's something that more and more businesses are taking advantage of. Uh, but I contribute to a number of other projects as well, uh, some of which you may have heard of and some you may not have. Uh, one of my first and earliest roles in open source and in community environments is uh, with a project which I'm sure you're familiar with uh, called Joomla. I actually started my open source journey with Joomla. And um, remember, I love to write code. Uh, but over time, I became more involved with the community and not just in the code aspect, but in the community aspect. Uh, so now I'm the community manager for Joomla. Uh, I am a project evangelist, and I speak um, constantly on the topic of Joomla. How many of you are familiar with Joomla as a content management system? Excellent, excellent. So let me tell you a little bit about the project, just in case you're not familiar with it, but I'm sure most of you are. Um, it is, without a doubt, an incredible community. Uh, it's been around since 2005. In fact, Joomla and I share a birthday of August 17th. So many of you probably know that Joomla was a fork, uh, as was just mentioned a second ago, from a previous open source project called Mambo. Um, and since 2005, Joomla has continued to grow and to expand and is uh, one of the most downloaded CMSs in the world. Uh, that's a pretty big piece of news, and it's pretty exciting. Uh, obviously, there's another open source project uh, that gets a lot of downloads as well in the CMS space. Um, but Joomla is, is unique in that it's the largest that has no uh, official corporate backing behind it. It's fully community driven. Uh, there's no other CMS platform that has this type of um, community focus. All done by volunteers and for the community. Uh, so that's a nice introduction to Joomla, uh, but maybe a few more specifics would help. So Joomla is multilingual, it's readily accessible, and it's totally convenient. Um, so, to give you some ideas about that, um, it's more than just impressive statistics. Um, because the Joomla community focuses on an aspect which is much more important than just lines of code. Um, something deeper, Joomla focuses on people. The individuals who make up the Joomla community. And these unique and special people all play a vital role 
in the success of the project. So here are a couple numbers related to the Joomla community. There have been over 60 million downloads of the Joomla CMS project. There are over 2,000 forum posts every single day in the forums. Because it's, again, about the people, not just the code. Um, so it demonstrates the growth of our community. And as you can tell, it's growing very quickly and very rapidly. Um, but, but I want to return a bit to the focus on people. Because that's what it's about. When you're trying to scale something globally, we're talking about people. And it's two areas in Joomla that maybe are a bit more difficult to talk about, um, but it's important to do so because it's not always pretty. It's not always easy. Uh, the truth is that Joomla, like any other community, struggles. And it has problems and it ultimately has successes. So let's take a minute and let's look at a couple struggles within the Joomla community. So Joomla has grown quickly, and as it's grown, it's struggled to maintain order, as I'm sure you're aware. Obviously, any time that you see an amazing growth within the community, uh, you have difficulty maintaining order and avoiding chaos. So it's almost inevitable you'll find yourself struggling with keeping everything easy to understand, easy to get involved, and making it so that you uh, have that same feeling that you have in similar, smaller communities. So when projects scale to huge sizes, the simple act of getting involved as a new volunteer can be an incredibly difficult task, and sometimes an impossible one. The struggle for order is even more of a potential failure when the project is completely and totally community-driven. Without any single entity supporting the community, helping to make the tough decisions, and ultimately ensuring that the project's forward progress is um, can be kept from the difficult and the chaotic nature of growing organizations. Um, it's not impossible, but it can be very difficult. Secondly, Joomla has struggled with adapting to change. Just as you will find in many large and established companies, think Microsoft, it can be a very difficult struggle to stay relevant and ensure your project doesn't just tread water. The minute you begin treading water, you are actually sinking. A project must maintain a vision for the future. That if we consider Microsoft as an example, we can all relate to the sense of stagnation that you might see. Now, obviously, Microsoft is a growing and vibrant company. And yet, when you look at it from an outside perspective, you look at it and you think, mm, maybe it's a little bit stagnant. Maybe it's not growing. Maybe it's not innovating like other companies possibly are. What once was a, a booming technology company is now maybe just trudging along. So these are a couple of the struggles that Joomla as a community faces. And they're difficult to share. But understanding and knowing your struggles is the first step to overcoming them. So I talk about them openly with you to tell you that every community struggles regardless of size. And so even if your community is small or if you're already scaling to a global community, you will be facing struggles. So I talked earlier about Joomla being about the people. And the people are really make up the community. So let's look in a bit more depth about the facets of these individuals. Because if you only take one thing away from my talk today, take away this. People matter. More than code, more than working groups, more than teams, more than documentation, more than anything, the people who are giving their time, giving their lives to making your community grow, these are the things that matter. These are the people that matter. So, relationships are important. If you maintain strong relationships within your community, you'll be able to handle the obstacles and the struggles that come up. Because the people are what are important. So let me tell you a little story. It's a Joomla story. It's a story of a person who is relatively quiet, shy, would never step outside their comfort zone, and would never think about standing in front of a group of people to talk. In the beginning, it started with a few small bug fixes, a simple pull request, take care of a language string issue. 
It wasn't fantastic. It wasn't anything groundbreaking. It didn't revolutionize the Joomla project. In fact, they may even be called worthless fixes because it wasn't anything incredible at all. And yet, those two small commits were enough to keep this person involved in the community and to become interested in the community. And as time passed, and as the encouragement from others in the community um, helped this person become more and more involved, he took a role as a leadership team member. And he was welcomed by the other people in the community with open arms. And he continued his involvement. Soon he was spending a significant amount of his time every day contributing and volunteering for free to the Joomla project. All of this came about from a few meaningless lines of code commits. How come? Because the encouragement and support of the other people in the community. And as you've probably guessed, this is my Joomla story. And that's how I became involved with Joomla. So if you hear nothing else from my story, I hope you will hear this. Encouragement, support, and relationships are of utmost importance. If we're to explore the complexities of scaling an application to a global user community, then this should be our one guiding principle. People matter. There are many aspects which can prove difficult when growing a community. And we'll discuss a few of those, and we'll use Joomla as our case study. Okay? So let's look at three different problems which you must overcome if you want to scale your community globally. First, languages. They can prove to be extremely challenging. As you're probably aware, I only speak one language. And I struggle with this because I travel a good bit to other communities and I always feel like the dumbest person in the room. Because when I travel outside the United States, I find that almost everyone speaks more than one language, and I only speak one. Two, if you count code. I think code counts as a language. So I speak two languages, I guess. But as you're aware from my speaking with you today, languages can be a difficult obstacle to overcome. And as your community or as your application grows beyond the boundaries of your country or your specific language, it will inevitably face the problem of languages. Each new language, each new country where your application begins to be used introduces a new set for potential problems. Let me explain. When I say languages are a difficulty, I'm not referring merely to the words, but rather um, the words present the most obvious challenge. And yet there's more. Because in the world we live today, we're blessed in that we're able to translate our words rather easily. The words themselves are not the problem. The true problem is that there are many other aspects of languages which must be considered. So such things as, as tone of voice, as the implied meaning, or cultural differences... All of those things relate to languages, and they're just a few ways in which there's a language barrier. So Joomla has been incredibly successful, I believe, in regards to languages, because the Joomla CMS currently has 58 translations. And that's more than just strings. That's more than just language strings and words that are translated, because each of those translations has a working group of individuals dedicated to keeping that language up to date with each new release of the software. Joomla works hard to ensure that it's more than just the words, that the implied meanings, that anything that's culturally significant are taken into consideration within those working groups and by the individuals who contribute to each of those languages. Great care is considered in all communications. And it sounds trivial, but it's actually quite significant to the success of the Joomla project. Joomla has created a wonderful code culture and a cultural document related to how things should be handled. 
It's incredibly important. Because languages are more than words. So I'll offer you a second from a younger and newer community, the, the Modic community, um, where we're going to contrast a little bit. Joomla has been around a while. It's established. It's a very large community. With Modic, we're putting into practice some of those same concepts and those same philosophies and we're seeing, as a new community forms, how we use those same principles to be successful. So languages are an important pillar in the building of a global community. Within only three weeks of launching the public beta for Modic, uh, we've seen five complete language translations and a dozen more already started. It's exciting to witness, and it shows to everyone that the Modic community values each language and every country. So here's your first lesson. If you want your application to be globally accepted, to scale to the size of a worldwide audience, you must consider the value of languages, both in word and in meaning. So now let's turn our attention to the second important problem to overcome. It's time zones. It's often easy in a daily routine to forget that everyone is in different time zones. So 2 p.m. in one location is actually 2 a.m. in a different location. And I can tell you firsthand, speaking from my own experiences within the United States, um, it can sometimes be easy to forget that not everyone lives where you live. If you're interested in being able to grow your community or your project or your organization to a global size, then you must remember and account for varying time zones. So let's take another look at Joomla and how it handles the time zone problem. Joomla leadership is comprised of three different teams working in harmony across many of the aspects of the project. These teams are consisting of individuals from around the world. Each team has dozens of different time zones. Joomla has used several different tactics, but one in particular has proven to be useful and serve the community well. Joomla alternates the schedule of leadership meetings. So what does that look like? Well, Joomla changes the meeting time to ensure that everyone has an opportunity to attend the meeting at the time that fits them best. And also means that everybody has to sometimes suffer and meet at times which are absolutely horrible. So the time zone is an often overlooked and yet important aspect of scaling an organization. In the beginning, this can be a difficult task because when your community is small, it's a challenge and it requires dedication and attention. And so I'll share with you another example from Modic. As I told you, it's much younger, it's much smaller, so we don't have quite the complexity or scaling at this point that Joomla has. Um, and yet the initial community members have proven to be very flexible and more dedicated with their time. When beginning to grow your community, be prepared to spend significant amounts of time at all times of day and night. You may not sleep much growing a community. But if you are committed to seeing your community to success, you must make sacrifices. So the second lesson to learn. In order to increase the global availability of your community and the project, you should pay attention to to the time zones of your contributors and volunteers. So now we're going to arrive at the final problem. You should seek to overcome as you grow a global product. And I say final, but in reality, there are many, many problems that you will face. We're simply looking at three today. The task of building and scaling a global community is an ongoing one. So just as you want your meetings or your time zones and your communication or your languages to be convenient, you also need to look at accessibility. So I'm quite pleased to share the success Joomla has seen related to being an accessible project. Don't mistake me. One of the reasons why Joomla has been so successful in regards to accessibility lies in the fact that it continues to focus on and constantly improve accessibility. This is not a one and done type of situation. 
through the use of specialized formats, screen reader improvements, and special administrator templates designed specifically to be accessible, Joomla shows its incredible attention to accessibility. So here's your third lesson. To scale a global community requires focusing on every type of user and being a community whose people and whose code is accessible to everyone. So we've covered three different problems that you will face when you're scaling a community to global size. Languages, time zones, and accessibility. So as your project grows, as you seek to encourage your community to grow and to scale to a global size, keep these three things in mind. So let me give you a quick practical step to implementation. First, you must plan ahead. Don't think only about what your code or your community looks like today, but what it will look like for weeks, months, or even years in the future. Where do you want to be, not where are you today? Secondly, you need to monitor everything. Don't let anything slip by the side. You have to be vigilant and encourage your community to continue to grow. Lastly, you should take what you have planned, mix with it what you have seen through your monitoring, and apply it to constantly improve your community. You can't simply observe it and monitor it without implementing change. Just as your code must adapt as your community and as your project grows over time and as new technology comes out, so your community must grow and adapt and be willing to change. So let me close with this. There's no formula that guarantees you'll be successful in scaling an application of global size. Joomla hasn't found the magic pill that makes it instantly work and always will scale a community without any problems. I shared with you at the beginning how Joomla has had some difficulties in its growing. Every community will have those. It simply cannot be put into a step-by-step -step plan, follow these and you will be successful. But rather, what I offer are some important lessons, things to consider that will give you a strong chance and a sure path for your community, your application, to scale globally. So I want to thank you again for the opportunity of being with you today. If you have questions, if you'd like more details about anything that I've shared regarding Joomla or anything else, uh, feel free to come and talk to me. I will do my best to communicate clearly. This is my handle for almost everything online. You can find me on GitHub, Twitter, everything else. I absolutely have appreciated the response and the time that I've had here, and I look forward to getting to meet each of you. Because remember, as your community grows, it's not just the code that matters, it's the people. Thank you.